Rivette is a silver and copper producer based in northwest Montana. Uh, we have the producing Troy mine. Currently this year we're aiming to produce 1.4 million ounces of silver, approximately 12 million pounds of copper. Uh, but we also own uh, and are developing uh, the Rock Creek mine, which is about 15 air miles away, perhaps about 50 uh, road kilometers away. Uh, it's a development stage project. We're in the final uh, throes of, of permitting and we hope to uh, get moving there in the next couple of years. Rock Creek is, is North America's largest undeveloped silver deposit. It contains on a historic and inferred resource basis around 300 million ounces of silver and about two and a half billion pounds of copper. On Rock Creek in November last year, uh, we were successful in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, which upheld the process of permitting on Rock Creek. Uh, it dismissed claims that the existence of the Rock Creek mine uh, would impinge upon the Endangered Species Act. So that was very, very significant news. We recently announced our uh, 2011 production numbers. They were right on target at just, uh, just around 1.3 million ounces of silver and 11 million pounds of copper. Troy Mine generated about $28 million of cash flow last year from operations. More recently, uh, we released our updated uh, reserve and resource information on Troy, uh, showing a reserve life of around seven years of mine life at Troy and a significant uh, resource basis. recommenced mining operations at uh, Troy in 2004, we only thought that we had three, perhaps four years of mine life. Well, we've operated it for eight years. We still have another seven years ahead of us. And frankly, we, you know, we'll probably be there with the development work we're doing for the next 20, 25 years. So the Troy mine has become a staple of the communities there. We employ 200 people. We're the largest employer in the area. It provides a very important economic and environmental baseline for us and gives you that all important social license as we develop our next project at Rock Creek. You know, you cannot be a good mining company unless you're very, very involved in your communities. Once again, uh, by being the, the largest employer there, we, we have responsibilities. As we went through some tough times in 2008, uh, we asked a lot of our employees to get us through those tough times uh, and in, that included them voluntarily taking pay cuts. But when it was time to, to get back to normal again, they didn't really complain about or ask, hey, when do we get uh, uh, recompensated for those pay cuts? They asked, what more can we do in the communities? And that was very important to us. So uh, we have a community um, outreach committee. Uh, they meet once a month. They look at, uh, at donations. Uh, they look at programs that we can get involved in, such as Habitat for Humanity, where uh, employees from the Troy Mine will go down and help build homes for low-income homes for, for people in the area. Uh, so we get involved in as, as many and varied uh, programs as we possibly can. It becomes very much the fabric of what the company is about. At the end of last year, uh, employees at the Troy Mine were given a bonus just prior to Christmas. Uh, one employee uh, stood up in front of everybody and said, you know, this has been a pretty tough year for a lot of people in the area. Uh, I am going to take uh, part of my bonus, I'm going to take $50 of my bonus, and I'm going to donate it to uh, the local food bank where people can come in and, and get food. And, uh, and he said, I, I, I challenge everyone else. And so people immediately said, yeah, we'll join you. Uh, the general manager at the mine said, well, hey, I tell you what, if you guys can do that, uh, the Troy mine will match whatever uh, is collected. Uh, we had our chairman of the board of, of directors there that day, and he said, well, hang on a second, if you guys can do that, the board and the officers of the companies are personally going to match that again. So in short, within a couple of weeks, there was $15,000. Uh, that was procured. Uh, it went to the, the, the three local towns, Knoxon, Troy and Libby, 
Uh, and it was an extremely heartfelt gesture because it was a case where uh, the food bank was running low. There were people who were going to spend time over uh, that Christmas and year-end vacation without really having food on the table. Um, so that goes beyond what a, a direction or a corporate culture is. When it really comes from the people working for you, then you know that you're doing the right things. So it became a little bit of the, the tail wagging the dog. It was the company supporting the initiatives of the employees. That's when you know you've got it right and you've got the right people. In the short term, of course, uh, we want to be the best operator, the most responsible, the most efficient operator, safest operator we can be at the Troy Mine. So day in, day out, our job is to move 4,000 tonne of rocker uh, underground and produce what we, meeting our guidelines and produce what we say we can do. In the longer term, of course, though, it is uh, completing our permitting steps here at Rock Creek and getting Rock, Rock Creek up and running. It's been a long and involved process, but nothing fatal. Uh, we've met every challenge, uh, and we're going to continue to do so. Uh, we can believe we can operate the Rock Creek Mine to the same high standards that we operate the Troy Mine and become a, a showcase for responsible development in the area. We think we really have an opportunity as a mining company uh, to do something different, uh, to do it at a level that no one's ever done it before, and uh, do that and be an important and integral part of the communities and the, and the state of Montana. For me to tell you that uh, you know, we will be a showcase for responsible development uh, is, is a pretty broad and a pretty strong statement. But you've got to look at what we start with. We are an underground operation, so your surface disturbance is, is minimal. But secondly, it's the benign nature of the ore body we have. Uh, it's basically sand plus disseminated copper and silver. So as we take one ton of rock and we crush it, uh, we take about 4% of its value out, which goes into the, a very, very clean concentrate, very, very clean copper-silver concentrate that we produce. And the remaining balance, uh, which is about 96% silica, goes to the tailings area. So at each level of the stage, once we look at the ore that we have, we look at the concentrate that we take out, we look at the tailings that we put into our tailings area, we know that there are no nasty elements such as antimony or arsenic through the system. We know that the concentrate we produce is, is incredibly clean. It's about 36% <coughs> copper, about 100 ounces per tonne silver, and once again, none of the, the difficult elements that smelters don't want to have at the moment. Um, so that's where we start with, a very, very clean ore body. Uh, and once you start with that basis, then you really are in a position to do things that a lot of other operations cannot do. Uh, we make sure that uh, you know, we manage our tailings area correctly to, to mitigate dust so there, there isn't any fugitive dust flying around. Uh, we do that by um, uh, irrigating and, and planting uh, you know, crops like wheat and barley. Um, we also understand that we're in a pristine part of Montana and that wildlife are in the area. So we make sure that all our employees are aware uh, if there is a, a conflict situation or if they do come across wildlife, uh, how to handle that, to make sure to report it, particularly if it's a, a species like a, a grizzly bear. Um, and so just to become more and more aware of our environment. But we also know that because of the nature of what we do, when we do finish mining, you know, we'll take down the buildings, we'll take down the mill, we take down the office building, we take down the shop, we revegetate. You know, our objective is for in 15 or 20 years time to people say, well, where was that mine? Because we really just can't find it. Uh, that's, that's, what, that's what it really means to, from cradle to grave, to be uh, ultimately uh, a responsible and environmentally uh, you know, sensitive uh, operator. We'll be at Troy for the next 20, perhaps 25, perhaps even longer years. Uh, once we start development of Rock Creek, uh, we want to be there generationally. We want to be there for 30, 40 or 50 years. Uh, in doing so, uh, we, want, we want to be mindful of the needs of all our stakeholders. Now that's our shareholders, but it's also those agencies, those the federal and state agencies that, uh, that support and guide us. It's our employees and their families. Um, it's, uh, it's other stakeholders as well, such as the environmental uh, conservation groups uh, who we need to work with so that we can all achieve the same goals. So our long-term goal is exactly as our short-term goal. 
be the best operator we can be, be the safest operator we can be, and be an operation that everybody in those communities there is are very, very proud of. Uh, when we've done that, we'll have achieved our goals and, and will be a great benefit for everybody.